yeah what's up guys Jordan here today we're going to be doing another video you know we're going to be making a four-wheel drive uh, drift line for the Sultan um, so if you if you haven't watched the previous video yet then I highly suggest you watch that because it's going to give you all the information you need to make a killer basic drift line and we're going to be applying some of those um, principles to this line to make it drift when it's four-wheel drive Okay. So let me show you what the line looks like. It's everything you would expect from a, a four-wheel drive line. You can get a crazy angle and get around pretty much anything. As you can see. Pretty fun. And it's really fun to do like here. Yeah. Actually, just like swing around corners and like this. Seat. It's pretty insane. So yeah, this is what we're going to be making, and uh, it's really easy to use as well, so you won't really struggle with it or anything like that. So let's get started. Of course, the first thing we're going to need to do is get the default line for the Sultan. So the default line for the Sultan can be just found on um, handling.cfg uh, on this website, which I'll put in the description. So we're going to just copy. Here, oh, I'm just Here recording on. something right now. Sorry. Yeah, and then you're gonna reload the. Uh, Sixty. We're on a different server today, so. The commands are, are slightly different and they all look a little bit different. So I usually go on this fault, so yeah. Um yeah, the lines are fault right now, so if I try and do all the drifting I was just doing uh, uh, earlier, it's, it's not gonna work. As you can see, it's completely different. Um so to make a four wheel drive line is pretty difficult actually. You have to really have a good understanding of the mechanics of how line design work, otherwise it could be quite difficult. I'm just going to go into map pack because there's so many people, so. Well, I have a lot easier. Okay, so let's see. The main things we have to be able to understand. The main things to understand is, uh, that is, is how the weight transfer and um, center of mass works. Because the issue with making four-wheel drive lines is if the center of mass and weight transfer is not correct, then the car will just stay constantly. Let's start by making some pretty simple changes to the line. Uh, firstly, we're going to um, make the drag two. We're going to make the grip 725. So the other thing, we're going to give it road ties. Um, so that grip's going to be considerably lower. We're going to make the speed limit 200 miles per hour. We'll keep the acceleration as it is for now. Um, everything else is fine until we absolutely need to change it. Put the use max speed limit on. And I'm going to ask you to put 1G boost on. 1G boost basically gives it a, a low RPM turbo. No kidding. <laughs> it will make the car a lot more skinny. Or it will drift more. So let's do... That's just my uh, 16. My 16. Let's see how it drives for now. I'm not expecting much from it though. Yeah, it doesn't really want to drink. Which is expected. So. Let's 
Belgium. So usually if someone's making a four-wheel drive line, what they will do is they'll go to the grip bias and just make it really high. And then they'll just get around. Now this does work, but it can make the car feel a little bit weird. Um to drift. I don't know if I'll be able to show you an example of this. As you can see, it does drift now, but it's, it's really hard to get it to turn the other way. It doesn't drift very well at all. So, you know, just changing the grip bias and making it like really, really, really high is not necessarily going to you know, give you the, the results that you're looking for. We made it really, really high now. So let me do this for you. I mean, look at that. Like the grip bias, the grip bias is so high that like the car just spins out as soon as you apply any kind of counter steer, which is again like one of the main reasons why you may not be inclined to want to want to be doing this. You can't hold the drift either. So just changing the grip bias is not necessarily going to give you a full -wheel drive drift car. All right. So let's make the grip bias five again. Yeah, so um, what we need to do instead is we need to um, change the way the mass is distributed throughout the car. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the mass Z much lower. So we're going to move like 35% 30, of the car's weight beneath it by making it negative 0 0.35. Not only that, we're going to put more weight on the front wheels 35% of the way on the front wheels by putting 0.25. This is going to change the way the car handles, making the car tires have a lot more contact with the ground, and it makes the car behave more organically as you would expect a uh, four wheel drive car to behave. So let's let me just show you an example of that. Sorry about the background noise, by the way. So you're going to notice that Yeah, so what should happen is I should be more inclined when it drift how it gets more angle hopefully you can notice that it, it gets a lot more angle under acceleration so i'm accelerating right now and it can actually hold the angle a lot better because of how the weight transfer is being changed or how the weight is being calculated so we've been by making the car lower to the ground or making the car center of mass lower to the ground and by making the car um putting some of the mass in the front you can achieve something similar to what grip bias would achieve but it feels much more organic normal and natural so that's step one step two is is to definitely lower the center lower the car itself to decrease the center of mass even further so we're going to drop the car slightly. Right. so now the car is really low and this is going to have a really nice effect in terms of see how much the car is actually angling in itself see we actually have a, a car that's drifting we didn't even have to adjust the the, the the turn mass or anything like that yeah now the, the suspension is kind of behaving really stiff and that kind of stuff so i'm just gonna um do what i i usually do which is First, I would like to make some of the wheels a little wider, with nice. And then, yeah, I want to give it some more room, room, wiggle room, so we can move around a little bit more. I'm actually going to make the more wiggle room you give your your wheels, the more you have to make the seats. I'm going to try four or five just in case. 
and I'm uh, gonna make the springs quite active and the dampens I'm gonna just decrease those. to be lower. So yeah, it, it behaves really, uh, um, really well. It's, it's starting to eventually slide, which is what we want, without having to change the grip bias at all. And this is just by adjusting how the, again, the weight is, is behaving. Right now, it just doesn't really have enough power to make the corners. So it's gonna need more power, obviously. And four wheel drive cars, you need to usually give them quite a lot of power. So I'm gonna give it, up to 600 or 60 acceleration it could be the equivalent of around 600 horsepower um and let's see how that that behaves because when you give it more power uh it actually can make it more drifty so so you can see that it's got a lot of power now. and yeah look at it drift So you can actually hold the slides now. It's amazing. <laughs> it doesn't really have enough steer limit. So we're going to increase the steer limit. I'm going to change it to about 45. Change to 45, we And off we go. So yeah, it's got a lot more steel in it. I should be able to recover from uh, my drifts a lot better. And how much angle that gets. Yeah, so it was really, really nice, really, really smooth. Um, so we can also do some other things. For instance, like let's increase the grip. Give it like sport tires. Like it just makes it more fun to drive because it's just faster. When it's fast, obviously you can take corners faster, and you, know, you can just do some really crazy stuff. So we're gonna make the grip higher. Be five sixty. Making the grip higher will not necessarily impact um, how well it drifts because the grip loss is still the same, remember. If anything, it will make it easier to drive because it has more, t it can turn faster, which means that you can generate more angle by turning in. Yeah, as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's behaving really well. Is struggling a little bit to hold its angle and so there's a very easy solution to that obviously which is now when we're going to adjust the grip bias so now we're going to change the grip bias so that you know it, it is able to angle a little bit more so we're going to make do like five on five and that should be plenty really yeah that should be plenty it be solvent that should be 516 and back to our same position 
So now it should gain a little bit more angle. Yeah, now it should gain a little bit more angle. Let me try that again. Yeah, look how much more angle it gains now during sliding. That's, this is just really, really smooth right now. Yeah, it's a lot easier to drift. It's a lot easier to drift. It holds. When it starts to drift, it holds its angle, which is what we want. so cool yeah so this this is this is behaving really well um and yeah it's it's a really simple line to make when you sort of know how obviously um but it's it's of course about adjusting how the weight transfers making sure the the, the right height is low so it's got a lower center of mass decreasing the center of mass even more uh, putting some weight to the front tires this is what allows it to behave more like a four-wheel drive car would and then just adjusting the grip bias a little bit so we can get a little bit more angle. And then, you know, from here on, it's sort of up to you what you want to do. Like, you can make the drag really low, zero. And uh, we already have to make the speed limit on. And with this, what we should be able to do is we just re make sure I've saved. We reload the car, D560, and go to. LB, we should be able to do these really long corners. That much, too much issue. Might need to give it a little bit more power. Let's see. Let's see. For this corner, I suspect that we would probably need nitro, but... Ah, oh, I didn't make it. <laughs> Let's try this corner that's coming up right here. It seems to be a pretty strong one. You just... Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Okay, no. But yeah, it can sort of make these uh, really long-winded corners without much issue. So that's pretty cool. Try one more. slide out too. Very cool. And if you give the car more steer limit, like you increase the steer limit more, you'll be able to do some pretty um, uh, cool, it's a pretty cool like 90 degree entry stuff, which is really fun with four wheel drive cars in particular, so I definitely recommend that. Yeah, I mean, I hope this was uh, it's useful. I'll post the line in the description, obviously. Um, but then this is usually how you will make a uh, four-wheel drive line. Let, let's drift it around this place. Give it a circle. Really 
Let's go around. So. And where was that? That loop? Ah, oh, it was just up there. I don't know if you can even get up there. Um, yeah, just kind of, I'm kind of dragging the video along. I'm just trying to show you all the, all the fun stuff you can do with it, you know? Because it is really fun to drive a four wheel drive line, so. Oh, look, look at that. I see it now. That's how you get up. It's cool if I've done it into the drift. But let's see if it can do this. Power. Yeah, it seems to be doing alright. Need some nitro, though, but. Look at that. Very easy, very easy. But yeah, um, I'll definitely post the line in the description so you don't necessarily have to make it yourself. Uh, yeah, I hope you hope you enjoyed the, the sort of shorter video. Make a four-wheel drive uh, drift line. Yeah, thanks for watching, guys.